Uh, so in this video, you're going to be sketching quadratics from the general form. Uh, now, this is going to take a little while, so make sure that you, you have your book, you're taking notes, you're ready to go. Uh, there's quite a bit here. Good news is that the first step's really, really easy. It's finding the y-intercept. Oops, finding the y-intercept, step one. So to do that, all you need to do is find your C value. That's your A value, your B value. Here's your C value. That's your y-intercept. So step one, y-intercept equals negative seven. All right, let's move on to step two. Step two is finding the x-intercepts. And in order to find the x-intercepts, doesn't matter what sort of question you're doing, the, the way to do it is always the same. Find x-intercept, let y equal zero. So here's the question we're working on. y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. So if I let y equal 0, that means that 0 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. Now, unfortunately, there's no easy way to do 0 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 7 and find out what x is equal to. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. Now we've spoken about the quadratic formula before. Quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that square roots over all of that, divided by 2. Okay, so from there, let's put in our a, b, and c value. So a is 2, b is positive 3, and c is negative 7. So the best way to do it is replace the letter with the number in brackets. So it's going to be negative, positive 3, so just negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3. See, so put it in brackets. If you don't do that, you might run into some troubles later with negative. So always brackets when you replace a letter. Squared minus 4 bracket A, which is 2, bracket C, which is negative 7, all over 2A. Oops, there's your quadratic formula, 2a. So negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So 2a, a is 2. So then it's going to be 2 times 2. Okay, now you could type all of that into your calculator, but I'm going to do a little step first, and it's probably really important that we do that little step. I'm going to do everything just underneath the brackets. So just a little bit of working off to the side here. 3 squared is 9, minus 4 times 2 times negative 7, that's uh, 8 times 7, that's 56, but it's positive 56. Okay, and the square root of 9 plus 56 is 65. Now the reason I've done that is because this little bit here, the bit underneath the square root or with the square root, is called your determinant. Now, if it's positive, which this one is, that means that there's going to be x-intercepts. If it was negative, like that, negative 65, negative, that means there's no x-intercepts. Now, if there's no x-intercepts, if we've done that little bit of working, we can say no x-intercepts, so we can move on. But... Now that we've done that bit of working, we can work, we can go one step further. We can say negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, we know all of that now is 65, all over 4. Now we need to type that into our calculator two ways. We need to type it in as negative 3 plus root 65 on 4. And we also need to write it in as negative 3 minus root 65 on 4. All right, I'm going to type those two into my calculator and see what answers I get. Calculator gives me two answers. One point equals 1.27 or negative 2.7. 
7. Okay, so there are my two answers. Using my quadratic formula, I solved this question. So x equals 1.27 or negative 2.77. So I found the y-intercept, the y-intercept was negative 7. I found the x-intercepts, which were 1.27 or negative 2.77. Remember, you might not find the x-intercepts all the time, only if our determinant, determinant, is positive. Now let's do step three. Step three, find the turning point. Now there's a very, very simple turning point formula. The turning point formula is negative b on 2a. Make sure that you know that turning point formula. So let's sub in b, so negative, use your bracket still, negative 3, because it was positive 3, but we need negative b, over 2a, 2 times 2. Okay. So it looks like our turning point formula is spitting out the answer negative 3 on 4. Okay, that's not your turning point. Technically, your turning point formula doesn't find the turning point. It finds the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the line around which the parabola is symmetrical. So now that I know my axis of symmetry, I can sub negative 3 on 4 for x into the equation. So wherever I see x, I just sub in negative 3 on 4. And again, when you sub it in, make sure you sub it in in brackets. So our equation is y equals 2 times negative 3 on 4 squared plus 3 times negative 3 on 4 minus 7. Now you can type it directly into your calculator looking just like that and it should spit out an answer for us. Now that's given me an answer of uh, negative 65 on 8. So what that means is that our turning point, turning point, is negative 3 on 4 and negative 65 on 8. Now, of course, if you want to, we can write that in a different way. Negative 0 0.75 and negative 8.125. All right, final step here, let's sketch our let's sketch our function. So, Cartesian plane, turning point of negative 0 0.75, negative 8.125, uh, x-intercept of 1.27, let's start there, 1.27. Uh, I'm sorry, not, that's the x-intercept of 1.27 and an x-intercept of negative 2.77, one point. That, that'll be sort of all the way out here somewhere. Negative 2.77. Now, a y-intercept of negative 7. So x-intercepts. Finally, a turning point at negative 0 0.75, so that must be pretty close to here. That's also called our axis of symmetry. And a y of the turning point at negative 8.2125. So just label that. That's negative 0 0.75. Oops, should get rid of that. 8. 0.125, negative 8.125. Okay, so now we just try to draw a really neat looking parabola. See how I go here. Should sort of have a nice little curve there. And it should look fairly symmetrical. Obviously I'm drawing on that on a computer screen, but you get the idea. Alright, a long process, but and lots of stuff in there. Find the y-intercept, it's in the front. Find the x-intercept by letting y equals 0 and then using your quadratic formula 
to first figure out whether there's going to be any x-intercept and then to find the x-intercepts. Then find the turning point by using negative b on 2a and then subbing that value back into the original equation to find the actual turning point and then sketch it. Alright, lots and lots to do. Good luck.